Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Crypto Chronicle podcast. Taylor, how are we going? Lovely as always. Yes, yes, always. Uh, we've had a bit of a red week in the crypto world. It's been a bit up and down. There's news flying left, right and centre. Um, obviously, last week we used most of the, the session to kind of go through altcoins in the market and kind of trying to digest choppy sideways price action, which has kind of been the theme that's continued into this week, hasn't it? Pretty much. It's, it's, it's sort of, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's boring. It's probably the best. One yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, I, I couldn't count how many times we've kind of said on the podcast. Uh, post halving it's usually that 60 to 90 days if you're a cyclical person and you like going off kind of what the the cycles have said and what they've been doing um this is pretty normal we probably mentioned it in the first week or two after the halving didn't we and you know um i think i remember you saying you know june 20th was probably well that's where i put 60 days yeah. i was like you know what i think we're going to do absolutely nothing <laughs> until that point and look 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 where we are we're I mean, pretty you much see where we were uh, you know when you did say that because i reckon it, we were low 60 to 64k yeah, or so it was literally um, not far from where round we are. tripped it back yeah uh so yeah this week uh it's just going to be a bit more on fundamental news it's continued in the land of kind of uh politics where donald trump and joe biden and this game theory on bitcoin has <laughs> kind of continued to be you know a major theme right now at least fundamentally in the market yeah. um <clears throat> which starts with you know late uh sorry early last week with donald trump coming out uh he came out um, well, Bitcoin Magazine came out with a report that he'd met with Riot. Yeah. Uh, what were the other companies? Clean Spark, Marathon Digital. So these are obviously the multi, you know, yeah. multi multi billion dollar mining companies uh, on the Nasdaq in the US. Um, and essentially, he pledged his support for Bitcoin mining in the states. Now. Um, he then came out on Truth Social after that and, you know, kind of argued that it was the last line of defense for the USA. But what was interesting to me is he did take what I thought was smarter was that energy kind of angle. Um, yeah. It would have just been, I feel pretty ignorant, just come out and be like, I like Bitcoin. Bitcoin yeah. mining should be here because yeah. I want Bitcoin. But instead, he did take that kind of smarter angle of energy. And, you know, obviously through Texas, yeah. um, there's a plethora of energy, isn't there? Well, it's, there's a plethora of energy, but it, it, like when you look at it from like a, a landscape across the US and to be honest, worldwide, energy is obviously a very emerging sector. You know, look at Australia, for example, putting in yeah. nuclear and so forth. It just more or less shows, I guess, commitment from, you know, potentially a future president to, I guess, prioritize energy efficiency across their entire country. Yeah. And obviously mining, you know subsidizes that you know they obviously you know big mining companies are happy to pay a portion uh to set up these things that are going to help the everyday person lower yeah. their energy bill yeah. while they're able to obviously get cheaper energy more mm. secure mm -hmm. and obviously larger uh scale power that that's also it's a win-win for everyone yeah. basically yeah yeah. Um, so then, yeah, kind of continuing that political theme and, you know, following Donald and his bullishness for crypto, which has continued into this week where, you know, you kind of see a new video every day, don't you, at a new rally where he, um, you know, he says, well, you see, his main angle on this isn't that he's for crypto, it's that Biden's against it and I'm going to save you guys against his tirade, you know, on it. Um, and so Biden kind of came back on all these reports that, like, you know, mid last week that, you know, he now wants to start accepting uh, donations in cryptocurrency via Coinbase. And, you know, I had a laugh with the Trading Academy members, uh, you know, the irony that Joe Biden, you know, who heads the SEC and Gary Gensler and tells them what to do, wants to use the custodian of Coinbase to accept Lightning Network Bitcoin donations, whilst also the SEC suing Coinbase for being an exchange in their... Uh, it's just, it's wild, honestly, what is going on. The irony, right? Yeah, it's just like... Uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's pretty funny now that we've got, you know, both competing, you know, candidates now fighting out for crypto and over all of this. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see as the, the elections are in November, a lot of people are using this as a kind of use case to, you know, do their investing and do their training and figure out, you know, where will the market top or where will it begin to rally a lot? And, you know, you can imagine that, you know, as we've mentioned, late year when the halving has gone past, alts start to pick up, there's rate cuts on the horizon, there's crypto presidents talking about crypto, you know, could make for a very spicy end of year into 2025, I'd say. Yeah, it seems almost like it's inevitable, but... Yeah. yeah. Sorry if I uh, do check my phone. I do need to uh, just check the prices of Bitcoin, which we will speak on in the technical analysis part because we are kind of at an absolute point in the market, aren't we? At 64K one, you said... 
it's an interesting one. Like we're obviously ranging in the in the low high, uh, low time frames right now, and it's yeah. pretty integral that we sort of hold. Yeah. Um, it's know. that last last land in the line in the sand, isn't it? Because of altcoins and. It's just whether or not we see like, particularly short time frame, long time frame is still pretty yeah. much, but like... Well, yeah, and it was what a major theme of last week was, wasn't it? So, um, we're actually won't talk in technical analysis today, we might as well just do it now because there's not much to talk about, is there? We've seen kind of altcoins high time frame bottom um, on huge SR flips, they've been so oversold, altcoins, like they've just been absolutely annihilated, um, whilst Bitcoin just continue. like the iron is Bitcoin is $65,000. <laughs> Could do you imagine... A Love that it's you like know, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it funny though that like you could you could comfortably say there's a lot of fear in the market right now, isn't there? Yeah, Ton of fear. Yeah, like I would say, you know, people are very pessimistic right now, particularly if they've already bought. Yeah, if but the, not, the, if but bought, it, it is good. it is funny when you take you know a step back though, and I think about this a lot with FET or mm. Soul, like some of our investments that we have. Yeah. You know, you know, Soul's at a dollar. Uh, sorry, FET's at a dollar fifty again now. Thank God. But you know, I was thinking about it and like hurt so much to see them come down, but then. Again, like I was thinking, like imagine if, you know, on the fifth podcast we had last year in mid-June, let's say yeah. June, July, where, you know, Bitcoin's 25,000 US. And I said to you, all right, on the 30, 41st podcast, 60 days after the halving, I'll give you 140 sol, 65,000 BTC, $1. fifty fat. You know, and, and what would you, would you have taken that? Oh, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> I think if you'd gone to any investor and said, you know, these are the prices that you'll get, but you just have to experience a bit of short time, mid time frame chop. Well, not even that. It's, it's to me, it's like from someone that like when we bought that stuff, yeah. right? now you're, now it's amazing. The issue is it was like, Soul was 200. Yeah, yeah. Three. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. So now you just, only think yeah. about that, don't you? You think well, about the just, down. I think people have got to understand it's the same with like, you know, there's always going to be, uh, contractions within the market yeah you know there's going to be periods where it's oversold it's yeah. overbought it's about looking long long time and like yeah. obviously you know realistically for us soul is a is a long-term buy mm -hmm. and it was a great buy at 20 bucks yeah same with FET. FET was yeah. still early on. Yeah. So it's just about and we have a number of ones that went down on, by the way, that are like that we've round tripped, you know. Um, one I'll mention is Phantom. We're actually not down on that as per se, given our average buy. But, mm. you know, that's Phantom's one that's gone from, you know, we bought that at 20 cents in the bear market. And like to me, that was a bear market low. Phantom actually went from when we bought 20 cents to 65 cents mid year of uh, mid 2022 or late 2022. It then went all the way back down to 15 cents up to $1.25 and then as low as 48 cents kind of yeah. yesterday or the day before. So, uh, you know, we're not just saying we bought coins and they're all up. Um, there's plenty of that are even about even or we've round tripped. And, you know, I think right now the most important thing to me that I gave all the Trading Academy members in the uh, market updates, I just tried to give them as many altcoin charts as I could. I said, your invalidation here is clear. It's, clear. it's easy. You know, a lot of them are kind of the alt BTC pairs are hurt. Um, and if BTC does lose its way, you know, a lot of these alts can get cheaper. But... That's an opportunity for me. And I think right now it's an opportunity. You know, if you're very keen on getting your first buys in or you're looking to get into the market, you know, now's not the time to go, shit, we've dumped. I've, I'm going to wait further for a dump. Get a bit of capital or a bit of skin in the game here because if things do turn, it's going to be a mighty turn. That's my point. And if we fall below, well, you can actually cut your losses and you can sell or, you know, if you're trading, you can use stop losses or whatever because it's pretty clear we're going to go a fair bit lower unless we get a fake out, which yeah. we could. Um, but... Yeah, it's pretty clear to me here. Um, and it's pretty clear kind of what's ahead. Long term, as we say, short term, don't worry about it. It's kind of almost like inevitable that we'd have like Bitcoin going from 50 to 70K in the space of, of what was it that? It was like 60 days, not even, yeah. wasn't it? It was inevitable Less. that we'd have such a big pump in alts. Yeah. But then obviously Bitcoin would consolidate, therefore alts would consolidate twice, three times harder. Yeah. yeah. So, as much as a lot of people are like, oh no, it's kind of it's something we always expected was going always. to happen. I think um, I th you know, I saw someone mention it today. I think if I'll, I'll get the chart out in the technical analysis section, maybe I'll just show this. Is going to October 2020 <laughs> um, of Bitcoin chart and just looking at the chop there and looking at what alts were doing there. And then what happened between October 2020 and March that March 2021 high before yeah before COVID. Um, 
Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. It was Alt Square. Just before that first all-time high, it was just completely vertical on alts and Bitcoin. And if you looked at the months like preceding that, it was just dead, like just chop and everything was down 50 to 70%. And before you know it, they were all up 500% in a matter of weeks. So... Um, if, if you want to look into this further, particularly on altcoins, the timing, talking about if you're using the cycle, go back to our podcast last week and we spoke on it the whole time, uh, particularly in writing. Um, but we will get back to the fundamental um, yes. <laughs> because Gary has agreed to a 4.47 billion settlement with Terraform Labs with the SEC. This is obviously Luna. Um, the whole fiasco of the bear market. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to pay that, which is... <laughs> You know, I don't think Terraform has four and a half billion dollars to pay a fine. Um, and Do Kwan is personally liable for 200 million or well, 204 million total penalties. Um, Can he pay that in time in loot? <laughs> he needs to get a leverage account and build yeah, it up should, yeah. um, there is more news that's that. come out on this recently about well, how much they have to pay or what they can pay so I guess there'll be more news that comes out on that soon so um, we might be speaking about it in a week or two but uh, Doquan will be back huh he'll be back he'll be back I'd give it 10 years back. and he'll have another good that'll be, be all over I'll be back yeah, well, they've done it once they'll do it again mm. so the good news from Gary though coming out of Gary is that uh, he does anticipate the spot Ether ETF uh, S1 approval will be done by summer 2024 so summer 2024 being winter here for us Australians so across the next two months um, but what's more important about that is since then Bloomberg analyst Eric that we always speak on here that's the number one news source for uh, the ETFs uh, reckons that it can be done as early as July 2nd so that's in about 12, 14 days we'll say 12, 14 something like that yeah 12, 30, well, it's the 20th now is it 31 days in June no, 30th of June, yeah. end of financial year. I'm a smart accountant here. That's how. <laughs> yeah. So, um, look, I'll speak on this. Actually, well, I might as well mention this before I give you the bull case of uh, the F ETFs. But recently we had Hashdex launch a mixed ETF yesterday. Mm. So that's one of Bitcoin and Ethereum holdings, which is a bit oh, crazy. Yeah. So we'll see if that gets accepted because that's kind of awesome. That it's like, do you know what I mean? You know how I feel like a lot of investors, even when I speak to... Um, mm. I was speaking to my girlfriend's dad recently and uh, a tough combo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it was at Yum Cha over Yum Cha, so uh, it was a bit easier, but um, our bellies were full. Oh, but, you know, and I was speaking to him because he was talking about, um, you know, what would I get if I did invest? And, you know, yeah. they, the, the one, two that everyone always knows is Bitcoin and Ethereum, but they don't know the difference and you can't try to explain the difference and someone yeah, that doesn't know crypto. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. no, yeah. no. I'm like, well, you could build applications on it. And it's, like, it's just like, yeah. Just um, like, what? On a currency? Yeah. But see, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Could you imagine like, you know, to someone like a boomer, yeah. um, you know, just here's the ETF that's got both. Don't have to pick and choose. Don't don't worry about. Is it an even 50-50? Uh, I think it's proportion to the market capitalization of both. So oh, I think it might cool. be more. Yeah, okay. and then so if F oh, raises swing, in market it, cap, yeah. it would like yeah. dilute. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's the idea behind it. Obviously, supposed to get approved. Mm. Um, but who who is listing that? Sorry, I didn't see that. Hashdex. Hashdex, right? Yeah. Um, because they originally had their own Ethereum one, and they withdrew it, if you remember, yeah. and then now they've submitted this. Um, but the biggest bullish part. Uh, for Ethereum, which isn't that the ETF is launching in 12 days. It isn't that Hashdex has brought this mixed fund. It's that Consensus has reported that the SEC has fully closed their investigation into uh, Ethereum 2.0 and the Ethereum Foundation um, for securities. So um, I can't believe right now the price action or the kind of the sentiment surrounding this is that this is literally us defeating the SEC and Gary again. They came at Ethereum when they wanted an ETF and said, you, your foundation is scammy. You've done all this, you know, cook stuff, you know, their securities. And now they've literally just said, we're dropping it. We can't prove it. I just feel like <laughs> just there like, needs to be a change in the system with the SEC works. If they go yeah. through a case that they can't win and they know they can't win, the time and resources they use for that needs to be paid back to the taxpayers. Mm. Just well, the, I just feel like maybe after the XRP loss, you should have probably given up, Gary. Maybe just, just if you lost to XRP, you probably don't stand a good chance anywhere else. Is, you, you'd think so. You'd think. Mm -hmm. You'd think. Um, so, yeah, consensus essentially is the one kind of at war with them, but... Um, because there's stuff over whether MetaMask swaps and staking and stuff is considered securities. That's why Consensus is the company, the head company of MetaMask. Um, 
But really, they're, they're still want, they're seeking more clarification. Yeah, they're yeah. seeking yeah. clarification more regulatory approval because it's just like this is the thing that happens and why so many companies complain like Coinbase is because like the SEC come to them and go, you broke the rules, and they say there are no rules. You're supposed to give us the rules, and you don't want to give us the rules. Well, that's the thing. They're just using hindsight. They're not yeah. actually forward planning. Yeah. Thinking and then if every time there's been discussion from someone like Coinbase, it's like, hey, yeah. you know, particularly consensus doing it now. Please tell us what we can and cannot do so that this does not happen. And they go, yeah, no worries. Six months, a year passes, probably a bear market comes in. Oh, oh you've done something wrong here. And yeah, it's just like, like... So, yeah, hopefully this might be the sign for Gary to get the F out and someone come in that's actually a little bit more forward planning. I'm sure that Gary won't be there if Trump won. I really hope. I'm so. sure of it. Who, who, who would... What president would keep someone on who's Owen? Like, yeah. What's it at now? He's... Just he, he used to take a blockchain class at MIT and pump Algorand and show Algorand. So this is the type of dude we're up against. But <laughs> anyways, enough on Gary. Yeah, Gary gets enough Algo. mention on here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> still on the ETFs. Uh, this week, recently we spoke about Monochrome's launch on CBOE as the mm. first uh, spot Bitcoin ETF in a show that held Bitcoin directly. What we didn't have was an ETF accessible on the ASX. That was supposed to come later in the year. Uh, but... Uh, the primary stock exchange, the ASX of Australia, just approved uh, VanX, VBTC, and they started trading today, June oh, 20. Oh, right. Yeah, so I'll be keen to see, you know, if that, yeah, Thursday, June 20, there you go. Yeah. Um, so I'll be pretty keen to see if, uh, hmm. yeah, how that goes. Uh, I think the monochrome one, I think, bad. achieved 50 Bitcoin in, demand, uh, in total yesterday. So what's 50 by... 65, we'll call it 400,000. So they haven't had a lot of investment compared to the inflows of, I assume it'll be a very slow thing in Australia, you know, just because it launched doesn't mean everyone's like, oh, I want access to Bitcoin directly. But hopefully Van Eck being a m much more bigger company um, what do you reckon? attracts that, huh? 50, 100? But BTC or, I don't know, on the first day? I'm not sure. I'd be interested to actually see the comparison of whether, you know, they do draw a lot more than Monochrome because Monochrome's a bit of a smaller hedge fund and it was in first and, and obviously Van X got a big standing in the US. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting because, like, I don't think Australia cares too much. The boomer, uh, sorry, at least the age demographic that would be investing into this ETF. And the reason I say that is because Global X 21 has had a Bitcoin ETF for Australia since 2021. Yeah. Um, it just hasn't been on the ASX or the CBOE. So if you truly wanted, uh, in Australia, if you wanted direct exposure to Bitcoin through an ETF, you could have had it. I just feel like Australian investors, well, Australia, yeah. Australian investors versus population comparative to the US is m probably a lot smaller. Oh, yeah, yeah one tenth. You know, people that call me and go, what do you mean that I can <laughs> use my self-managed super to invest in? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy that people what people don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, last bit of news is Tether Holdings has launched a new synthetic yeah. dollar backed by gold. Yeah. Uh, so it's introduced by Alloy uh, and it's on the Ethereum mainnet blockchain. Yeah. It's going to be known as AUSDT. So this token allows users to create it through over collateralization with another Tether token linked to gold's value. So, you know, there's always been that silly knock on Tether. Ah, oh, it's a scam. It's made up. What's it backed by? Uh, well, here you go. Nay says you can get a stable coin backed by gold. If you don't, if you, if you don't believe it's backed by the US dollar. I'm just trying to make a joke. <laughs> USDT. Yeah. Uh, there's too many stable coins on my liking now. Uh, but it's yeah. got... Yeah, so the gold is stored in Switzerland, of course. Uh, it's kind of got a market cap of about 500 million. So it'll be interesting to see how that tracks and whether it actually gets steam. Um, but, what, 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 yeah. So. No, I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> it's a um, question. It was, it, was, it was just not relevant. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Sean Sharp today, but no. uh, per your writings, this is a lot bigger than usual. There's a fair bit going on in the mining sector, is there? <sighs> yes Get us off with no. Bitcoin first. A lot well, different to three to four weeks ago? It's very interesting. Sorry, not much different yeah. to three to four weeks ago. It, it hasn't changed, but it also is exciting that it hasn't changed. I know that sounds really stupid, but when you look at it from a long-term perspective, right, difficulty has not really changed in the past 12 to 14 weeks, which is very long. Um, and that's more or less we've had one big jump up, one big jump down, and then pretty much non-existent. I think we're about to go through another adjustment today in the next four or five hours that looks to be slightly changed from what I put on the um, 
uh, on the Chronicle, and it's just because it's changed in the last few hours. It was going to go up by 0.06, and that looks like it's about to go down by 0.07 or 8 or something. So we're in a position where we're actually at almost a negative uh, of difficulty adjustment across that time period of 12 to 14 months, which uh, 12 to 14 weeks, which is just nuts. Usually it's up by 2%, down by 2 up by 4 down by 2 so forth. So it's actually step ladders up, and that's usually based upon hash rate. The interesting thing at the moment is that we're seeing that obviously a lot of older generation machines are pitter-pattering outwards, just being that profits are down, revenues down. It's sort of meant that, that we've stabilized over the past sort of, you know, pretty much post-halving, which is a very interesting thing just being that we, we sort of thought it would go up a little bit quicker, particularly with new introduction of machines, you know, you're talking the new T21s, S21s. Uh, coming on the line, there's S21 Pros that are going to go to Riot and all that sort of stuff in the next sort of week or two. We're sort of seeing that a lot more um, transactions jump off in the sense that we're seeing, you know, the the transaction fees remain around that five to seven US per transaction, while transaction volume drops right off. So. It's sort of a nothing burger, but it's also a good thing because we're seeing obviously stabilization with with mining rewards, um, which which should give people a lot of hope that, you know, we're not going to see a huge jump in hash rate and Mm -hmm. price change. Realistically, the two are very tied together, Mm -hmm. which could be a really clear indication of what's to come over the next few months being difficulty and hash rate goes up. Therefore, Bitcoin price might follow suit or vice versa. So it's a pretty, pretty interesting time on that. It's a bit of a watch this space area. Um, I guess on alts, it's pretty similar. Not much has changed, but everything has changed. You know, difficulty <laughs> keeps adjusting. Uh, not difficulty, sorry. Um, sorry, difficulty keeps going down just in the last two weeks based on obviously alts bleeding pretty considerably. Yeah, makes sense. Um, there's not a huge amount to discuss on alts, just purely being that there's not much that's changed. However, there's obviously new machines coming out. You know, if you're mining on scripts right now, your rewards are going to drop in the next two, three months, and that's based off L9s coming out. So just be prepared for that. Um, there's no real indication as to how many they're producing, but they will come to market sort of around mm. that August area. I think they're going to be pretty expensive to start with, so I don't think it's going to be a huge jump. Um, the biggest one that like a lot of people have, have called and asked about and so forth, I'm very glad that I was able to do the research, which is Alephium. Um it's a pretty cool, new, exciting thing to mine. However, it's very interesting. Obviously, the AL box came out from Gold Shell about two months ago or a month ago, sorry. And, you know, if you looked at ASIC Mine of Value, it was it was the top-ranked miner above the KS5s and it was because it was making two grand a day. Absolute ludicrous uh, profits. However, if anybody bothered to read the white paper, which if you look on Reddit, not many people did, <laughs> was that as soon as the hash rate reached one petahash, the rewards, I think, went by, down by you know, one eighth. So, you know, went from making two grand a day to now it's making about 30 or 40. So it's always important to make sure you read the white paper. And it's why if you've ever spoken to me about mining, it's pretty, pretty obvious that any other, any altcoin you have to, you know, do a lot of research in because there's a lot high inherent risk. So yeah, pretty interesting that obviously Bitmain now producing, I believe an eight terahash version, which, you know, anyone who's got one of those AL boxes is pretty much going to use it as a doorstop. So Mm. Yeah, always important to do your research in mining because <laughs> coins, you know, network's so small, it's just a huge risk. And what I will add, add on to that um, from Taylor's point of view on the research part is um, that's exactly why we're both here. Uh, <laughs> but for you guys, exactly. but, but, but make sure you do your own research. But, you know, particularly in the trade, you know, going back to what we were saying before about how it's a real pivotal point in both trading and mining, if you guys are sitting on the fence and you're sitting there and, and you listen to us, you know, we just had someone reach out that's been watching our podcast for a number of weeks and got some miners because obviously they've been listening to Taylor each week, talk about it more and more, and then eventually got the confidence and conviction to give him a call and chat about it um i suspect there'll be other people out there right now that whether they're still part of our community or outside of it uh, you might see the market going you know the wrong way and you might be thinking okay maybe it's time i can invest uh but you don't know where to start uh the trading academy is a perfect service to start um you can get in touch with taylor or i via the discord um we can run you through that and then obviously as taylor's been talking about all the miners whether it's a lithium whether you want to get a bitcoin miner now doge ltc uh taylor has all the information uh readily available for you to understand uh to make that investment choice so please reach out uh that is something mm. that you're interested in whether it's trading or investing um, we've also got DeFi stuff for those more um you know DeFi enthusiasts too uh yeah please reach out uh but 
In that case, I think that'll wrap us up for today. Yeah. As noted, we're sitting right on 65K. Line in the sand here for Bitcoin's probably below 64K, I'd say. On uh, If we do, I think it's going to be a prolonged winter a bit. Um, you know, July, August might be just more time for accumulation. I think if we can reverse from here, it'll be a great reversion point. Um, and a lot of shorters and a lot of people will get sidelined. So Very much. here's to hoping. He's hoping that screen's green next week and <laughs> we'll see you then. Cheers. Thanks, guys.